ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you. I guess the address has changed here. This is now four championship drive in Auburn Hills, Michigan. Here to present the Larry O'Brien Trophy to the world champion Detroit Pistons, the commissioner of the NBA, David Stern. You know, you look back at that, how that championship team came together, and it seems like it was really fast. The 04 championship for me is a championship that came out of nowhere. Because three years prior, that team had won 30 games. I don't know if, if it was a result of the Rashid trade or just what, but all of a sudden, bang, that team came together quickly. All those pieces, that's when you start saying, okay, wait a minute, now we're pretty close to something here. Deep to Reggie Miller, shot blocked by Tayshaun. They got to the championship series and nobody gave them a chance. Nobody gave the Pistons a chance against the Lakers. Nobody. The series is won by Lakers. Lakers, long or short? Six games. You look back at that, how that championship team came together and it seems like it was really fast. But there was, there were, um, it was the gradual ascent. You know, we don't want to, everybody, anybody to think that the guys that uh, we traded or whatever was the, was the reason we wasn't winning. Our, our, our goal always been, you know, going out, competing, giving ourselves a chance to win a championship. The 2004 Detroit Pistons, you have to begin with uh, Ben Wallace. Ben Wallace was just a down-to-earth guy who fit the persona of this city perfectly. He just worked his rear end off, and that's what people in this town do. So you begin with Ben Wallace, who was given empowerment and said, hey, look, Ben, lead this team. Rip's going to attack to Wallace! Chauncey Billups was a free agent. They brought him in there. And, and he was, I mean, like I said, nobody knew who he was, but he was the right guy to take this team to the next level. Traded Stackhouse, who had really helped him, for Rip Hamilton. And the, 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 the cohesion between Rip and Chauncey in the backcourt was, was evident from day one and powerful. See outside, Rip off a corner screen. That's it, go got it! Rip Hamilton just ran off picks, ran off picks, ran off picks, ran off picks. He was dizzying to watch. So now you surround him with Tayshawn Prince. Tayshawn Prince, a small forward, not a great scorer, but you could tell in his rookie year that he had some, enough offensive potential on the blocks where he could help you. Top of the key, delivers wing and a right to Tayshawn. Spins to the lane, flips it up, lefty, fills it up, 4.2 seconds left. Well, not only did the teams have to deal with Chauncey Rip, they had to figure out, okay, now how are we gonna guard this long, string bean here who's killing us in the low post. They can't get a second shot. All right? And they can't get a fast break player. That's when Joe made the real controversial change to bring in Larry Brown for, for Carla, who had won 50 games two years in a row, was the, the coach of the year, his first year. Um, and, and he's the one that took him to that point. At that point, so he got a very controversial move. Tayshawn sets up Chauncey, and he triples. Chauncey Billups at the at the time was not a great leader, but he was taught the game by Larry Brown. Then you had Ben Wallace and uh, Tayshawn Prince, great defenders, but there was a piece missing. Out of bounds, so a flat start for the Pistons. That team in the start of 2004, as good as it was, still wasn't complete. I mean, they were kind of they were good. They were over 500. But you still felt they were treading water. Um, I'm supposed to make an opening statement. I, uh, Coach Smith is smiling right now. Trade deadline comes and the Rasheed Wallace deal, the amazing Rasheed Wallace deal, three-team deal, to bring Rasheed Wallace, the final piece of that puzzle in, and it took off from there. I'm just glad, you know, I was real happy when 3.30 came yesterday, so it was finally over with. I knew where I was going, you know, be settled down now for the rest of the season. The Lakers in their finals experience. A 
talk to a lot of writers who cover the NBA. Talk to the folks in Las Vegas. The Pistons, I have not seen pick to win the series anywhere. How do they contend and make it a long series, Tom? When the NBA Finals started against the Lakers, I, like everybody else, or most people, was convinced the Lakers were going to win that series. And at 10 minutes past six in Los Angeles, the NBA Finals get underway. When the Pistons went against the Lakers, I, I think a lot of teams, a lot of people, a lot of media thought that the Pistons weren't going to, that, that this was as far as they were going to go. They weren't ready for this. You know, when you talk about the Detroit Pistons, uh, if, let's say, they didn't win the title this year, it would be probably the first team since the, the Seattle Sonics that have won a title without, quote unquote, a superstar. Yeah. Nobody gave the Pistons a chance against the Lakers. Nobody. Not a single person. And the first game they go out and they beat L.A. in L.A. and everybody's like, well, you could, a fluke can always happen. If somebody told you O'Neal would get 34, Bryant would get 25, Rasheed Wallace would have foul trouble and not play very much in the first half, You'd be in Los Angeles, you'd be facing the vaunted Lakers, and you'd win by about a dozen. What were those odds? But I still think a lot of people felt like, okay, maybe conference finals champions, but not NBA champions, you know. The Lakers were still, in a lot of people's mind, you know, this immovable force. They start with Shaq, he gives it to Walton. Here comes Kobe. Less than five, from way outside, got it! .1. And then in game two, Kobe hit some prayer from downtown to send it to overtime, and everybody sort of freaked out going, well, there you go. Here we go. Here's trouble. You know, we just got to bounce back. You know, we came here, should have won two games. Um, you know, hopefully you learn from these things. But we're one on one. I remember the story where they were on the plane after they lost game two. In, in, in L.A. after Larry Brown didn't have them foul on a three-point shot. And he tried to apologize to the team on the plane. And Chauncey Billups said, go away. We got this. It's no problem. We, we just, we, we got this. Doc, um, the Pistons lose a gun rusher the other night. How did the Detroit Pistons recover from that? We kicked their butt so hard game three, it wasn't even funny. The only question left is, can they hold the Lakers to under 70, which would be an all-time Laker playoff franchise low in the shot clock era. And the Pistons have held a lot of teams under 70 this year, and they're going to hold the Lakers under 70. And we knew game four was going to be more of a challenge because there was an extra day of rest in between. Rasheed Wallace, who was a walking technical foul for years in Portland, is now most likely, along with the Pistons, a game away from a championship. Well, the Lakers came into this series heavily favored. Detroit a big underdog. But the Piston upset in game one, and then it took divine intervention, NBA style, for the Lakers to win game two. Detroit thoroughly dominated game three, and the Pistons have put themselves in a position to clinch the NBA title Tuesday at home. Game five against the Lakers here at the Palace. I don't think, I don't think I'll ever see a crowd at the pro level uh, like that again. O'Neal at the ready, Ben Wallace jumping for Detroit. Wallace is 6'9", gives away about three and a half inches, and that time, a legal jump ball, and the Lakers get it. That means they will start the fourth quarter with a possession. Bryant guarded by Prince, shoots over him. Doesn't drop, Big Ben high for the rebound. Now the Pistons can assume the lead here. Phillips puts it on his hip, goes all the way, that's the bounce. From the opening moment that ball went up, it was okay. KD bar the door. Get out of our way. Chauncey against Pete. Chauncey gets the hand sets up. Man from the Thunder Dome. Peyton in the lane. Ben with a steal. Ben driving ahead of the crowd. Up for the flying foot. Ben Wallace. You knew early on that night that the Lakers had no chance, that that series was ending right here at the Palace. It was not going back to Los Angeles for game six, and the Pistons made darn certain of it. Rick Fox ending the game, hunched over his former teammate, Lindsey Hunter, and congratulating him as the clock ticks down. That the Detroit Pistons have just shot the Los Angeles Lakers. 187 to win the NBA title.